Jefferson Graham. I'm a lifelong photographer, writer, and video maker. I am your guide on today's photo walk. The whole goal of the channel is to take you to some pretty awesome places. Ahem and show you where to get the best shots, how, when, and where to take them as well. Today's photo walk is actually a road trip to the other side of Oahu because you all know about Honolulu, the big resorts, and you probably know about North Shore and those gigantic waves. There's actually a lot more here if you're willing to get in a car and check it out. It's, I think it's worth it. I hope you do too, particularly if you're willing to wake up early because that's where you're gonna get your best photos. I mean like really early like set your alarm for 4.30 early. Ready? Let's start with a morning sunrise. Of the five Hawaiian islands, Oahu is the third largest after the Big Island and Maui, but by far the most visited with just over five million visitors annually which is not too bad for an island with a population of just under 1 million people, with one third of them living in Honolulu. So why does Oahu get so many more visitors than the other islands? Well, locals chalk it up to a mix of scenic beauty and nightlife, offering tourists the best of both worlds compared to other quieter islands. And Oahu is also home to the state government, which brings in a lot of people to do official business. Finally, Honolulu is the easiest island to access from all over the world. So many more airlines fly into Honolulu than the other islands. So Honolulu's fun, but it's mostly big resorts, crowds, and urban life. The really cool photo spots are on the other parts of the island. So our photo walk is going to begin at the airport where you will pick up your rental car and we'll head east, basically circling the island. On paper, our Oahu photo walk is like a three hour drive, but we're going to be stopping and starting to take photos so you can expect to spend an entire day. And because you're going to want to catch key sunrises and sunsets, I'm hoping you'll break the trip up into several days of drives. So our stops include the Blowhole Lookout, Sandy Beach, a really cool lighthouse, the town of Kailua, which is a great alternative place to stay with access to great beaches, like Kailua Beach, the swanky Turtle Bay Resort, the world-renowned North Shore, which is home to some of the most awesome views and giant waves you'll see anywhere. Sunset Beach, which is my favorite spot for, let's see, how about a sunset? The fun little town of Halwea, and we will end up at Pearl City and the Pearl Harbor Monument before returning the rental car and saying aloha to the island of Oahu. Trust me, it pays to get out of the city and explore because uh, Honolulu is more just city, urban, um, you know, just regular anywhere else. Um, you're on an island, so you should try and explore, you know, try new things, live a little. Before we head out on the road to explore the island, let's take a few seconds to talk about the art of the morning sunrise on Oahu. Now read those early mornings beyond the joy of watching the sun pop out from under the water, which we don't usually get to see back home. You get this array of colors before and after sunrise that are just really hard to beat. So what do you need? A tripod will go a long way to help you shoot the pre-sunrise at a slow exposure for that cool, dreamy, flowing water effect. And of course, it's mandatory for getting a time lapse because there's no way to keep your hand steady for that long period of time. And even if you don't want to time lapse it, you can just shoot straight video and speed it up in video editing later. Steadiness will be your best friend there as well. Now, if all you have is a smartphone, that's fine, especially if you have an iPhone and you can use the iOS software trick in live photos called long exposure. Just snap your shot in live photos mode by making sure the live icon is clicked. Then after you've taken it, flip the shot upward and you'll see four options, live, loop, bounce, and long exposure. You want the last one, obviously. What you see is what you get. If you don't like the results, keep snapping until you do. All right, let's start our drive heading east towards our first stop, 
the blowhole. Well, this won't exactly make your top 10 list, but it is en route to other musty spots, so why not? The gist, if you're there at the right time, you can see smoke and water blowing out of the rocks. Now, when I stopped by, it wasn't exactly blowing, more like puffing. The blowhole was created eons ago thanks to molten lava tubes that were formed from volcanic eruptions. You can also see a different type of blowhole, a whale, during the December to April whale season. Now let's move on to what is my favorite beach location on the island of Oahu, Sandy Beach. All the beaches in Hawaii are pretty awesome. You are in Hawaii after all. There's no such thing as a bad beach. Photographically morning sunrise, this is the spot. This is my favorite, the beach that is called Sandy. Because not only do you have the sun rising over the water, you have these crashing waves that, over the rocks. I mean, how, can you, how do you beat that? Sandy Beach is like two beaches in one. On one side, you've got that deep blue Hawaiian water, which is amazing. On another side, you've got lava rocks. Sandy Beach is considered to be on the south shore of the island and beyond the beauty. Please, if you put down your camera and go in the water, be careful. The beach, which happens to be a favorite of former President Barack Obama, is known for its nickname, Breakneck Beach, due to what could happen to a surfer during high surf season. Next stop, one of the great Hawaiian lighthouses, speaking of which. Now this is fun, it's one of the best hikes on the island of Oahu, about a mile and a half up the road with a camera or without to see the historic lighthouse that's beaming over the island of Oahu. Come on, let's get going. Your first glimpse of the lighthouse is a side view. You'll get a better shot if you have a camera with a big lens. Of course, that is if you're willing to lean over just a bit, as I did. Notice that the keyword was lean over. You wanna lean over the rail and eliminate a lot of this guardrail. If you keep on walking up the hill, you got a good overhead shot that will be okay on your smartphone, though kind of small. Again, if you have a camera with a zoom lens like this, you can get a pretty good overhead shot. But selfie alert, this is a great spot for a selfie stick. Hold it up high and you'll get to capture yourself and friends with the lighthouse in the background or have really long arms. The trail is one of the most popular on Oahu and a tough ticket when it comes to parking. I was told to be here early and arrive by 7 a.m. at which time there were just a handful of spaces left. When I did say goodbye, there were no spots available. Now some fun facts. The lighthouse was built in 1909. The paved trail takes about 30 minutes to get to the top. It sits on the most southern easternmost point of Oahu. On a clear day, you might be able to see neighboring islands, Molokai and Lanai from the top. And the lighthouse is off limits to the public, but you know, we're welcome to photograph her. Okay, one more fun spot in the east, the Mecca Research Pier, which is really popular with local swimmers and fishing enthusiasts. Next up, the tiny little city of Kailua, which happens to have a really nice beach. This is a great alternative place to stay if you don't feel like the big resorts of Honolulu. And it happens to have some great nearby beaches, namely, Kailua Beach. I shot some of my favorite sunrises here. Next, we have the photo op known as Makali, or as locals call it, the Chinaman's Hat Island, because the island looks to be in the shape of a hat worn by peasants in China.
From the east, we are now ready to head north, home to the North Shore, home to some of the biggest surfing waves in the world in the winter. We're here in August. Let's go find out how big some of those waves are and see some of the small towns in the North Shore. Come on. As you make your way north, remember this is rural Hawaii. You will pass through some really cute tiny towns, which is great. I'm assuming you're ditching the city for a different look today, but do know that you are on the most populated of the Hawaiian Islands, and you will see traffic when touring, especially near beach areas. But does your home state look like this? Now, once the cars start to move again, get ready for the famous shrimp shacks and food trucks on the side of the road, serving fresh, garlicky shrimp. towns, there's a big resort on this side of the island called Hilton Turtle Bay, a classic open-air Hawaiian property with an ocean view and a huge pool. Overnight stays can be really pricey, topping $500 a night. I roughed it a bit by skipping the bed and just lunching by the pool for under 20 bucks. Now, yes, they have turtles in Turtle Bay, but they're down the road a bit. You will have to travel to find them. Also down the way is Shark's Cove, which is said to have the best snorkeling on the island. It attracts a lot of tourists, so right across the street are tons of shops devoted to selling you t-shirts, trinkets, and the like. Finally, to learn more about the area, I went to the source by knocking on a sandy tower for a chat with a local lifeguard. This is the Seven Mile Miracle, surf capital of the world. And that's right here, Sunset Beach, Pipeline, and Haleiwa. How massive are these waves? Oh, it goes across the road in about three or four different areas. I've rescued tourists drowning in their rental car that have got knocked off the road at rock piles by the skate park. And they couldn't even download what was happening because they're like, this wasn't in the brochure, you know what I mean? Yeah. And what are the months for this? Uh, November, December, January, February, smack down in the winter is when we get all this energy. And summer is flat as a lake. We need to kill some time before the sunset at Sunset Beach, so let's go check out the small town of Haleiwa. now about an hour from Waikiki in one of the great small Oahu surf towns. The tourism board calls it the social and artistic hub of the North Shore. The town won't produce any amazing island photos, but it's a fun stop for food and shopping. All right, it's that time. Let's go talk sunsets, a Hawaiian sunset. So we opened up this episode with sunrise. What better way to end it than with the sunset at the appropriately named Sunset Beach. Let's check it out. As with many settings of the sun, the actual sunset wasn't that much. It pays to stick around. Look what happened just five minutes later.
Now, before we say goodbye from the island of Oahu, we'd like to take a moment and invite you to check out some of our photo walks from other Hawaiian islands, starting with the Big Island. As always, check our blog, thebestphotowalk.com, for more in-depth mapping information, more photos, and an interview with a local Oahu photographer. Hey, I hate to break it to you, but it's now time to go back to the real world. We're saying goodbye from the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Pretty awesome place. Kind of fun to leave downtown Honolulu and see the rest of the island. I hope you got some great picture ideas. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter or Instagram where I'm at Jefferson Graham. And I will catch you on the next photo walk. Thanks for watching, everyone.